A man killed tonight. Was he a good Samaritan in the wrong place at the wrong time? Plus, a big pot bust in rough terrain, but it cost 10 deputies an unplanned night in the woods. And crash landing of a tiny plane and the fate of the pilot. Live at 5, K2 News, the spirit of the Northwest. Hello, everybody. I'm Ben Tilkin. And I'm Anna Song. First on two, police find a bloody scene outside a southeast Portland home. In the driveway, the body of a man. k 2 Susan Harding is in the newsroom with why police are calling this a suspicious death, while neighbors say it was murder. Susan. Homicide investigators were immediately called around 3.45 this morning when police found the body of an adult white man. Now, police are giving few details about what exactly happened, but neighbors say a man who was trying to be a good Samaritan ended up losing his life. Crime tape seals off an entire block of southeast Portland homes as homicide investigators look for clues and neighbors search for peace of mind. It's scary. It's really scary. Police called out to Southeast Roan for a domestic disturbance, found a man dead next to this truck. This is being termed a suspicious death. Neighbors say Dolores Kirshner always keeps a close watch on her block. Yeah, I've been here over 40 years. And she's talked to the woman who lives in the house where the victim died. I guess he got stabbed in the neck or someplace here. She says he was trying to break up a fight between a man and a woman at an apartment next door. It was a Mexi me Mexican man beating on his wife. So this man in the White House went over there to try to stop the fight. Detectives search a dumpster, look in the bushes, and question neighbors. Well, I just heard someone yelling over there. So what did the yelling sound like? It was just like someone got hurt. Oh, oh. Uh, it was pretty bad. Terry Young was smoking a cigarette when she saw something unusual. A man running frantically through the parking lot. And down there tripped and fell, running over and then ran that way. She hasn't yet talked to detectives. She expects they will come to her. Did you see him carrying anything? No. No, but he was definitely running from somebody. Did he look like he was panicked? He was scared. You could tell he was scared. A feeling this longtime homeowner can relate to. Makes you not want to go out at night. And Portland police say they will be able to give out more information after the man's autopsy, which is scheduled for tomorrow. They have not released any kind of description of a suspect. Live in the newsroom, Susan Harding, K2 News. Susan, thank you. A car accident has caused major problems on I-5 North right now. A car hit an ODOT sign machine on the side of the road at the Woodburn exit, spreading battery acid across the right lane of I-5 and all over the off-ramp at exit 271. Fire crews are at the scene to begin cleanup, but traffic is backed up almost 20 miles into Salem, and the wait is expected to last at least a couple of hours. ODOT is recommending you take other routes like Highway 99E or the old Highway 219. You can both access, you can access both of those in Salem. We're learning more tonight about the man who was shot as he drove through the Highway 26 tunnel yesterday. The shooters got away and police are not officially releasing the victim's name. But K2's Nick Winkler found out that victim has a criminal history. Nick joins us live at the scene. Nick. Dan, the victim was driving westbound here on Highway 26, and police say he was shot as he was driving inside that tunnel. And although he does have a criminal history, police say this shooting was random. The car police say was shot at is registered to Todd Carlton Westby on the phone. Westby's mother told us her son had been shot while he was driving and is now at a hospital where doctors have been performing surgery. Police say Westby will live. No one answered at Westby's last known address. We checked his background, though, and found Westby has been in trouble in several counties on charges, including ID theft, drunken driving, and driving a car without the owner's permission. At the time of the shooting, police say Adam Christopher Gonzalez and another man were riding with Westby. Police arrested Gonzalez on an unrelated warrant. Detectives specializing in gang violence are now investigating. At this time, we have no reason to believe that the victim or his witnesses have any gang ties or knew the suspects. But police say the shooter may be affiliated with the gang, though they say this shooting was random, sparked by some words exchanged right before the shooting. The vehicle the shots were fired from belongs to a woman living at a Hillsboro apartment complex. No one answered the door, but a neighbor says the woman drives a vehicle that does not match the suspect's vehicle's description. Has two boys, and sometimes he gets out at night, and Sometimes they kind of like fight and stuff like that, and 
That suspect vehicle is described as a dark-colored SUV. Police are not even sure right now how many suspects got away in that vehicle, but witnesses are telling police the men inside were either Hispanic or black. Live along Highway 26, Nick Winkler, K2 News. Nick, thanks very much. A Newburgh man is in the hospital tonight after the ultralight plane he was piloting crashed after losing power. 41-year-old Clifford Rohrbacher was airlifted to OHSU just after 10 o'clock this morning. Officials say he was alert at the scene. No word on his current condition. His plane ended up right next to a fence in an industrial park where his plane had clipped a building. Rohrbacher took off from the nearby Sportsman Air Park. The FAA is out to investigate that crash. Ten Skamania County Sheriff's deputies and members of the Clark Skamania Drug Task Force were stranded in the wilderness overnight after trying to remove marijuana plants from a large grow operation. The group was working in rough terrain on the east slope of Dog Mountain, about 10 miles east of Stevenson. And as night fell, the group got disoriented. Skamania County officials say they were removing more than 3,000 pot plants. They believe it's related to the large bust made almost two weeks ago. I think the same three men are responsible for the grow. One person died after an overnight fire in Salem. This happened on Lancaster Drive. Firefighters responded to the scene just after 3 a.m. Neighbors told firefighters they heard an explosion and saw that house on fire. Firefighters say the blaze burned at temperatures more than 1,000 degrees. The home is a total loss. Firefighters say that blaze was human-caused. Firefighters battled a grass fire late last night on Government Island. The fire was first reported as just a small blaze, but it soon, soon spread from the dry grass into a grove of trees on the north side of the island. Crews spent the night watching for hot spots. Five people burned in a boat explosion early Saturday have all been released from the hospital. This was the boat on the Willamette River that exploded, forcing 11 people to jump overboard and swim for their lives. They were 150 feet from shore. Investigators say a fuel or mechanical problem caused that explosion. The boat sank, but it will be pulled out of the water for investigators to get a better idea of just what happened. A fight in Camas lands one man in the hospital and another in the Clark County Jail. Camas police say they were called to a disturbance on Northeast Dallas Street yesterday afternoon and found a man who'd been stabbed twice. He's not been identified. Police have arrested another man who lived at that house. In news across America, six miners remain trapped in a Utah coal mine. Rescuers have not yet found any signs of life, and though there is still hope, it is fading. ABC's TJ Winnick reports from the mine. For the second time this weekend, a high-resolution video camera was dropped down the second hole, drove 1,900 feet into the Crandall Canyon mine. We were able to see uh, a tool bag and uh, a chain and just things that you normally see and, and have underground, but uh, we did not see any uh, sign at all of uh, any of the miners. But the camera has detected a livable space. A void seven and a half feet top to bottom, but the floor is buried under two feet of rubble. Now teams are drilling a third hole into the Utah mountain in the hopes of getting an even better look. It'll be a depth of 1,414 feet. We have a high degree of assurance that we will be able to uh, hit the mine opening. Families of the six trapped miners are praying for a miracle. They came together this weekend to lean on their faith and each other in the That's face of now. the unknown. I think as time goes on, we are all losing hope, he says. We are all very sad. Rescuers still believe their best chance of reaching the men remains with the crews digging underground. But that effort is only about a third of the way to the trapped miners. T.J. Winnick, ABC News, Huntington, Utah. Divers returned to the waters around the Minneapolis bridge collapse today, and they recovered human remains late this afternoon, but they were not immediately identified. Five people are still missing after the collapse. Now, storms forced Navy divers out of the water overnight and made the river's current worse. Around 100 people were injured in the collapse, but only eight remain in the hospital right now. And here's video from Colorado. A woman is pulled to safety after her Lexus SUV careens into a canal late last night. After being carried downstream, the woman was able to get out of her car and climb her way out of the canal. Rescue crews there helping her. She did suffer minor injuries, and she was cited for reckless driving and driving under the influence. Three people are dead and a police officer and another person wounded after a shootout at an accident scene on the Dallas freeway. Police say the shootout was between people in a car that crashed and officers who saw someone lying on the road and stopped to help. 
Good Samaritans may have also stopped to help, but ended up returning fire. Dallas police still don't know who shot who. Police in Pennsylvania are calling it a senseless act of brutality against women. A man armed with a hammer went into a beauty salon and demanded money and purses from four women inside. Even though the ladies did not resist, a witness says the man struck them anyway with his hammer. One woman suffered a skull fracture. The oldest victim, 76 years old, the youngest, 56. Police later arrested a 41-year-old man in the incident. Troubles continue at LAX. Yesterday's airport delays are causing a ripple effect that's expected to cause further holdups today. It all started yesterday afternoon when a U.S. Customs and Border Protection Security System crashed. An official says the system contains law enforcement data crucial to deciding which passengers may enter the U.S. Machines were back on by midnight, and the backlog of more than 20,000 passengers was cleared this morning. But some departures are delayed so flight crews can get their mandatory sleep periods and aircraft can be cleaned. Mm. And if your travels take you north to Seattle, beware of construction on I-5. Work started this weekend on a massive construction project near the intersection of I-90 and I-5. Crews are on schedule so far, but the construction could affect some 126,000 drivers. Officials say there could be major delays tomorrow morning if not enough commuters take alternate routes. For more information on that construction, head to our website, katu.com, and look under the hot links. It draws tens of thousands of people every year. And coming up after weather, the Providence Bridge pedal and whether it broke a record today. Julia. Well, it was a gray, cloudy day and somewhat cool here in the northwest. Even a few sprinkles still coming through the area. Will tomorrow be a complete 180? And what about the rest of the week? The forecast is ahead. Next, he created two of the most successful game shows ever. He even wrote the theme music for Jeopardy! Tonight, we say goodbye to an entertainment legend. K2 News is on your side with continuing coverage of the big story. A hostage situation is in its 16th hour. Came to an end at about 3.50 this morning. That's why the Associated Press, fast newscast by the Associated Press. Entertainment mogul Merv Griffin has died. His family says he passed away from prostate cancer and he was 82 years old. Griffin started his career as a singer and movie actor and later hosted The Merv Griffin Show. ABC's Carla Wool has a look back at his long career. Before there was Oprah, there was Merv. <laughs> With Jack Douglas, Rako, Richard Pryor. Beginning in the early 1960s, Merv Griffin was a fixture on daytime TV. He hosted 5,500 shows and interviewed more than 25,000 guests. What do you feel most romantic? You. Here? Yes, with here with you. Yes. He schmoozed presidents from both parties, chatted with Senator Bobby Kennedy, and sat down with Martin Luther King. Your home is actually in... Atlanta, 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 Georgia. It was Merv's stage, and most of all, he liked to share it with comedians. He gave Richard Pryor and Jerry Seinfeld their first big breaks and got acupuncture with Don Rickles. I'll pull yours out if you'll pull mine out. Griffin won 17 Emmy Awards. He once said he judged his success by how much fun he was having, and he had a lot. Well, Cody, your relatives. Always yes. ask, have you seen Merv? How's Merv? How's right? Merv? How's Merv? Do you see Merv out there? Griffin got his start as a singer. In 1950, his song was number one on the hit parade and sold three million copies. A short career in movies followed, but it was on daytime TV that Griffin made his mark. He created the two most successful game shows ever, and even wrote the theme music for Jeopardy. Everybody knows my little song that I wrote for it. Griffin parlayed that little song, the game shows, and his talk show into an empire. In the mid-1980s, Griffin sold his production company for a quarter billion dollars. Money he invested in hotels and racehorses and in still more TV shows. Griffin loved the game of life. Toward the end, when he was hospitalized with cancer, he said, I'd rather play Jeopardy than live it. Carla Wool, ABC News, Hollywood. A very distinctive voice. Yeah, the yeah. ultimate yeah. entertainer. Yeah, multi-talented yeah. man. Wow, it'd be a, it's kind of a sad loss for the yeah. entertainment community, huh?
So. Some raindrops today. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we definitely got some raindrops around the area, not much. Pretty much what was forecast, about a tenth of an inch at the most. In uh, most locations, of course, the coast got more uh, than the inland valleys. And we're still seeing uh, some moisture come down. However, it is fizzling rapidly. The latest look at Storm Alert Doppler radar, and you can see, yes, the beaches were the place that got the most moisture. And right now, there is some moisture falling in Washington County, as well as Yamhill County and uh, into Columbia County this afternoon but that should die out relatively quickly. And as we look at the 24-hour rainfall totals, you can see Portland really just got a trace, enough to wet the rain bucket, and that was about it. Astoria got 15 one hundredths, Kelso about a tenth, and obviously the more north you were, the better shot you had at seeing any moisture. The chance of rain is rapidly dying out, and I think most areas will see dry conditions for the rest of the evening. However, we will also see gray skies, as you can tell here from our riverfront camera. It's currently 65 degrees, a lot cooler than it was at this time yesterday. Yesterday we were in the mid-70s, so a good 10 degrees cooler than uh, the day past. And then a live look outside from the Hood River Inn. You can see the sun trying to peek through the clouds there, but overall much warmer. 79 degrees at the moment uh, from Hood River. So the front is weakening. It still has yet to actually move on shore. And believe it or not, it's not really going to move on shore. Instead, it's going to retrograde back out onto the Pacific, the whole system, and high pressure is going to develop from the east towards the west. And uh, the reason the front is weakening is because that high pressure is building in so nicely. Still a chance of drizzle this evening. By 10 o'clock, we should be down to about 61 degrees with mostly cloudy skies, a chance of light showers. And then by early morning tomorrow, we'll start to see the clouds break up. Right now it's 65 in Vancouver, 66 in Troutdale, 65 in Aurora, 67 in Salem, and 65 degrees in McMinnville. Hillsborough and Skepoos are checking in with 62 degrees. Other temperatures across the area, 89 in Baker City, 87 in Burns, 81 in Pendleton, 78 in Spokane, 68 in Seattle, 67 in Salem, and 59 degrees in Newport. So the front is stalled this hour. The jet stream, you can see it very clearly diving down south, and as it does so, a ridge of high pressure is lifting up to the north over here on the western half of the United States. And as the jet stream continues to dive south, it's going to force this thing even higher and force the front to go actually backward on itself and this is going to hover here for the next couple of days uh, and really won't come inland until about Wednesday or Thursday. So we're going to see the con conditions improve nicely. So tonight, cloudy, still some drizzle around the area. Then tomorrow, lots of sunshine. Temperatures are going to rebound a good 5 to 10 degrees. So we should be in the 80s tomorrow. This evening, there is still a slight chance of some moisture. By 9 o'clock, we should be at about 61 degrees or so. So on the mild side, but still a chance of light sprinkler drizzle here and there. And then later on towards dawn, we'll get to about 56 degrees with partly cloudy skies. And tomorrow afternoon, I'm looking at a beautiful day. 80 degrees, lots of sunshine, northwest winds at about 10 miles per hour. And then here's the five-day forecast and 10-day trend. Another nice day on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, the clouds begin to roll in once again. And the storm system that uh, is now offshore will finally get enough strength to come inland on Thursday. And that's when we see our best chance of rainfall this week. But even so, it's not that big of a chance. It's just a little sprinkle here and there overall. But then uh, we come back to nice weather for next weekend, so it's perfect timing. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It is a once-a-year opportunity, and this morning a record number of bike riders turned out for the chance to navigate Portland's bridges without having to dodge cars. More than 20,000 cyclists took part in the 12th annual Providence Bridge Pedal today. They crossed up to 10 of the Bridge City's famous routes across the Willamette. The turnout was at least 2,000 more than last year and set a new record. The idea that 20,000 people would participate in something where you could actually, you know, have bikes have access to the bridges rather than cars, just for a morning. But, uh, you know, frankly, with all the people that were out there today, it seemed like it would make sense to do it every weekend, or at least once a month. We'll see about that. Proceeds benefit Providence's Heart and Vascular Institute and the Bicycle Transportation Alliance. You know, one of these years I'm going to get around to doing that. The Oregon International Air Show wrapped up its three-day run in Hillsborough today with another packed house and an encore performance from the Navy's Blue Angels. An estimated 93,000 people turned out over the weekend to watch the Navy's aerobatic experts along with diving teams, vintage warbirds, and stunt planes seemingly defying gravity at will. 69 nonprofits and groups will benefit from the show's proceeds. Plans for a new Oregon campground are met with controversy. Coming up next, concerns the park could put salmon at risk as well as the safety of people.
why pay full price for a half a gutter system when you can have the patented one-piece hood and gutter system from us, LeafGuard, for virtually the same money you pay for the gutter cover from the competition. In fact, the competition says, ah, we're just like LeafGuard. Not the case. This is the gutter cover. Now, why would you pay full price for that when you could have the patented one-piece hood and gutter system from LeafGuard, virtually the same money you pay for this? Why don't you call 1-800-GUTTERS today? Look at the LeafGuard system. It's earned the Good Housekeeping Seal. Twelve colors to choose from. Call in today. Save 50% on labor. You know LeafGuard. You know we're going to do the job right on time and on budget. And you get six months, same as cash. I think any home with leaf guard gutters is going to be an attraction to anybody that's had to clean out gutters before. Don't worry about those gutters again. Call me and let me keep your gutters clean forever. And if you call in now, you get a $100 gas card with purchase. <laughs> It's Toyota's Lots on the Lot event. With so many great models to choose from, it's the right time to buy. Get 4Runner with 2.9% APR financing for 60 months or $1,800 cash back. Or get Sequoia with 3.9% APR financing for 60 months. Toyota's Lots on the Lot event. Going on now. Hi, I'm Michelle Moon. I'm here to tell you that shrimp is in at Hooters. We have fried shrimp, steamed shrimp, buffalo shrimp, New Orleans-style shrimp, and now, a talking shrimp. Again, at Hooters, shrimp is in, and just $7.99. It's shrimply irresistible. Cut. Okay, bring in the chicken. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Anna. Wing special. Celebrate with us. RV buyers, Paulsbo RV is celebrating the grand opening of the new Mount Vernon store at every Paulsbo RV location. Get a free generator with any RV purchase and incredible low volume prices. For example, own a Fleetwood Pegasus for $126 a month or Sunseeker with full body paint for $477 a month. Celebrate with us and save. Get the best RV deal now through Monday at Paulsbo RV's grand opening sale. A new campground may open along the Nehalem River in Tillamook County by 2009, but not everyone is welcoming it with open arms. Grandma Comey shows the park may have significant problems that include safe access and wild salmon at risk. If you take a slow stroll through Cougar Valley, you see why the Oregon Parks Department picked it for a campground. People just love to be near a river and hear the sound of the running water and then a chance to just walk along it uh, and up into the hillsides and some of the property we own. The 314-acre park offers stunning views across a broad-shouldered valley with two creeks flowing into the nearby Nahalem River. It is a paradise. Nice small parking lot leading to a trail system that takes you through these wonderful meadows. It is also on the fast track to become Oregon's next state campground with up to 75 tent sites and miles of hiking trails. This is part of the governor's challenge to us to not just acquire new land and open new parks, but at least make one new park facility available each year. Cougar Valley is another one in that line of new parks. Trouble is, there's a line of locals who say the park is a bad idea. They look at this as just kind of a sinful trespass shouldn't go on that land. Residents from Wheeler, Nahalem, and Manzanita learned of the park plan in a recent hearing. They're worried that a new park will put even more tourists onto crowded roads, and limited law enforcement will mean more crime. Plus, the wild salmon that swim in the Nahalem River may be at risk. My concern is if a park goes in there, those fish are going to be traumatized. Salmon fishing brings big dollars to small coastal towns. Jim Nielsen says park development plus more people high in the watershed could hurt the fish. There's spawning habitat there in the river that could be destroyed, uh, not to mention the tributaries, Cook Creek and, uh, and Lost Creek. Without spawning habitat, you don't have fish. It's pretty pristine up there right now, and I think you're going to lose that if you bring in a, a bunch of campsites. And then there's the problem of getting to the park. It could be dangerous. When it comes to public safety, this is a good example. I'm on Foss Road, the main access into Cougar Park. It's narrow, it's winding, and as you can hear, it runs right along a railroad. Some say it puts the campers at risk, and the fix could be expensive. One fix calls for widening the road and installing signals. 
while another idea bypasses the rail line altogether with a new bridge closer to the park's entrance, but at a cost of three quarters of a million dollars. Residents say all of this adds up to a park in the wrong place. I don't think it's just a case of Nimby, you know, not in my backyard. Are they wrong? They, they are not thinking of the right kind of state park. Park planners say tourists are already here, and they are filling up nearby campgrounds like Spruce Run each weekend. Cougar Valley Park will offer a place to pitch a tent with resident staff and volunteer hosts to manage the site. So we would have mm. for the size of the park quite a bit of supervision. Still, many residents wish that state parks had considered their idea two years ago when the state paid two million dollars for the parkland. Too bad that they didn't talk more to local people if, in fact, they did any conversations at all to find out what community sentiment would be about this idea. How much of this is being pushed down the throats of the local community. That's the part of the hard work of park planning, is working with people, listening to them, and finding a way to make a state park here work. And that's what we're going to do. And they will be doing it soon. Park construction is slated to begin next summer. Along the Nehalem River, Grant McComey, K2 News. Now the public comment period for Cougar Valley Park continues through August 23rd. A new draft of the park plan is scheduled to be ready for a public hearing in late September. For more on Grant's stories, head to the Outdoors page at KATU.com. NASA engineers are taking a closer look at damage on the space shuttle Endeavor. What needs to be done about that damage and whether it threatens the safety of astronauts returning to Earth. And next, why police are calling the death of a man in southeast Portland suspicious. It's a show seven million years in the making. Don't worry about that clubbing thing. It was a golf club, by the way, you know, not a club. <laughs> Caveman, a new comedy Tuesdays this fall on ABC. Start here. We thank you for calling LeafGuard 1-800-GUTTERS. We get calls all the time about problems with those old gutters. Call me today. We'll keep your gutters clean forever. 1-800-GUTTERS. Here's a call from uh, Newport, another one from Seaside. Salem, thanks for calling in. They want to eliminate clogged gutters, which could wash away their spring flower beds. Let's listen to Maynard Moe. We'd be gone for weeks at a time. When we come back, the mess is unbelievable, cleaning out those gutters. So we just had to do something. And a leaf guard turned out to be the answer. Thank you, Mr. Moe from Vancouver. Why don't you call in now? Save 50% on labor. That's right, save 50% on labor, and you know LeafGuard's going to do the job right. Six months, same as cash on a tight budget. We work with you on the financing. Uh, whether you're calling in from Vancouver, like Mr. Moe, or there's a call from Wilsonville, we thank you for calling in. You get a $100 gas card as a bonus with purchase if you call right now. Call LeafGuard today. Clog free, guaranteed. Call that 800 number. Settle for an ordinary BLT when you can have a chicken BLT from Taco Time. You've never had a BLT like this before. Crispy bacon, lettuce, tomato, guacamole, cheddar cheese, and ranch dressing combined with our delicious all-white chicken and rolled into our famous homestyle tortillas. Try the chicken BLT today at Taco Time. It's my ordinary BLT. Anytime is Taco Time. You don't plan it, but one day, your uncontrolled movements take you somewhere. And now all you want is to go everywhere. So instead of being swaddled, you need help to cruise. That's why there's Pamper Stages. From swaddlers to cruisers to easy ups to feel and learn, we plan for all your changing needs for the right help when you need it. Pamper Stages, inspired by babies. Log on to broadwaytoyota.com Shop our inventory online and let our internet staff arrange everything for you. It's really the VIP way to buy a Toyota. If you're looking for a Toyota, Broadway is the only way. Live at 5.30, K2 News, the spirit of the Northwest. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Anna Song. And I'm Dan Tilkin. A disturbance in southeast Portland leads police to the body of a man. Homicide investigators say the death is suspicious. k 2 Susan Harding explains why this man who died may have been trying to help a woman in trouble. Susan? Well, Portland police are staying very tight-lipped about this case, but several neighbors say they know what happened, and a good Samaritan ended up losing his life. Police were called out to a domestic disturbance on Southeast Roan. That's where they found the man's body, in the driveway by a pickup truck. Homicide investigators spent their time here, 
and outside the Oakdale Apartments on Southeast 54th. Neighbors say a man was assaulting a woman near these apartments around 3.30 a.m., and that's when a man inside this house came outside and told him to knock it off. It was a Mexi me Mexican man beating on his wife, so this man in the White House went over there to try to stop the fight, and um, eh, I guess he got stabbed in the neck or someplace here. Portland police say they won't reveal the identity of the victim or how he died until after an autopsy, which is scheduled for tomorrow, and they have not released any kind of description for a suspect. Reporting in the newsroom, Susan Harding, K2 News. Certainly very troubling. Thank you, Susan. A car accident is causing major problems on I-5 northbound right now. A car hit an ODOT sign machine on the side of the road at the Woodburn exit, spreading battery acid across the right lane of I-5 and all over the off-ramp at exit 271. Fire crews are at the scene to begin cleanup, but the traffic is backed up almost 20 miles into Salem, and the wait is expected to last at least a couple of hours. ODOT is recommending you, you take other routes like Highway 99 or the old 219. You can access both of those in Salem. An ultralight plane crashes in Newburgh, and the pilot has flown by life flight to OHSU. Now, police say that Clifford Rohrabacher's plane lost power, clipped a building, and landed in an industrial park. These pictures are of the scene less than a mile away from Sportsman Air Park, where that plane took off. Officials say Rohrabacher was conscious at the crash site, but no word on his current condition. The FAA is investigating. Ten Skamania County Sheriff's deputies and members of the Clark Skamania Drug Task Force were stranded in the wilderness overnight after trying to remove marijuana plants from a large grow operation. The group was working in rough terrain on the east slope of Dog Mountain, about 10 miles east of Stevenson. As night fell, the group became disoriented. Skamania County officials say they were removing more than 3,000 pot plants. They believe it's related to the large bust made almost two weeks ago. Officials think the same three men are responsible for the grow operation. Police are not officially releasing the name of the 29-year-old man shot while driving through the Highway 26 tunnel yesterday. But K2's Nick Winkler spoke to the man's mother and found out he has a criminal history. Nick. Well, the victim was driving westbound here on Highway 26 when police say he was shot driving through the tunnel back here. The victim's mother says her son was taken to a hospital where doctors performed surgery today. Police say the victim is going to live, and that victim is Todd Carlton Westby. He's been in trouble before in several different counties for ID theft, drunken driving, and driving a car without its owner's permission. Now, police have no reason to believe that the victim or the two people riding with him have any ties to a gang but police say the shooter may be involved with some gang activity. The vehicle where the shots were fired from belongs to a woman living in a Hillsborough apartment complex. Has two boys, and sometimes he gets out at night, and sometimes they kind of like fight and stuff like that. And Christopher Gonzalez was in the car with the victim when the shooting took place. They say police do that they arrested Mr. Gonzalez on an unrelated warrant. They have not arrested any of the suspects in this case so far. In fact, police are not even sure how many suspects got away in that vehicle described as a dark SUV. But witnesses are telling police that the men inside who got away are either Hispanic or black. Live along Highway 26, Nick Winkler, K2 News. The news around the world tonight, NASA engineers, with the help of a laser on the end of the space shuttle's robotic arm, analyzed the damage done to Endeavour during its launch. ABC's Bob Jamison reports NASA conducted the inspection to see if repairs need to be done before the shuttle returns to Earth. Mission controllers are still analyzing a small gash on the space shuttle Endeavour, trying to determine if the damage will endanger the orbiter during its return to Earth. So this is the data that we were looking for. Not only did we get uh, really good imagery, uh, we got a good laser scan of it as well. For several hours Sunday, astronauts Barbara Morgan and Tracy Caldwell used a robotic arm to view damage on the underbelly of Endeavour. We like your picture and you go to proceed. Lasers and cameras collected data. We want all three white spots on the screen at the same time. And shot it down to Earth where it was analyzed by engineers at the Johnson Space Center. The trouble started on liftoff when a piece of foam broke off the fuel tank and ricocheted into Endeavour. You can see that piece of foam come right off and you can see it hit that strut and shoot straight up into the underside of the orbiter. 
Today, they got a closer look at the gash and a three-dimensional analysis of how deep it was and how much of a problem it could cause. Astronauts have kept tile repair kits on board the shuttles since the Columbia disaster when unrepaired damage to the left wing caused Columbia to break apart on re-entry. Bob Jamison, ABC News, New York. Rescue efforts are underway in China where people are stranded on rooftops from continuous rain and flooding. At least 23,000 people across the southwest region of the country have been affected. In some places, the water is at least three feet deep. Planes are grounded and even stuck on flooded runways. Mudslides have stalled trains in their tracks. Supplies are being dropped by helicopter to villagers in some of the worst hit areas. A dinosaur that definitely has something to brag about. The Brachiosaurus bronchi holds the title of the world's largest dinosaur skeleton. Newly refurbished, this 43-foot high dinosaur is making its home at Berlin's Museum of Natural History. The museum's directors say it's also one of the best preserved collections of bones in the world and a great source of knowledge for scientists. That's amazing. From tall dinosaurs to tall people, this Ukrainian man has just been declared the world's tallest man by the Guinness Book of World Records. 37-year-old Leonid Stadnik stands at 8 feet 4 inches tall. He says it's the little things that make being a giant so tough. Cell phones are too small for his huge hands, and he had to give up his career as a veterinarian after he outgrew his car and couldn't get to work. Have you noticed your cost of milk is going up? Where, where it's selling for as much as $5 a gallon and why the price has gone up everywhere. Still ahead. But next, Americans living longer than ever, but falling behind other countries in life expectancy. Which countries have people living the longest? And a nice day yesterday. Today, a little mixed bag. And Julia Radlick is just ahead with how your Monday is going to shut shape off. Ah, oh, let's face it, never a good day to clean out the gutters. Get the ladder out, climb up the ladder. Oh, then you got to put your hands in that mess. Don't do that anymore. Do like thousands have done here in the Northwest. Call us here in Portland at 1-800-GUTTERS. Look at the Leaf Guard system. It's the only one-piece leaf shedding and rainwater management system guaranteed not to clog. We'll come clean it for free. Call 1-800-GUTTERS today. Lots of colors to choose from. It's earned the good housekeeping seal, and you will say big if you call in now. Take advantage of 50% savings on labor and put an end to cleaning out those gutters. And you get six months, same as cash. And remember, the competition says, oh, we're just like Leaf Guard. Not the case. Why would you pay full price for a gutter cover like this right here when you could have the patented one-piece hood and gutter system from Leaf Guard for virtually the same money you pay for the gutter cover from the competition? And probably the gutter cover won't even match the gutters. Call in today and you get a bonus. Call right now. A lot of folks calling in during the program. You get a $100 gas card with purchase. Ever notice that stores rarely put their most popular products on sale? Well, for a limited time, Sleep Country's best-selling mattresses are all on sale. Save on Sleep Country's top-selling Simmons, Sealy, Spring Air, and Pacific mattresses. Even our best-selling Beautyrest and Posturepedic mattresses are on sale. Plus, get 12 months interest-free financing. The best sellers on sale for a limited time. Guaranteed comfort, best selection, lowest price. Why buy a mattress anywhere else? We've purchased uh, several cars, and uh, several of our friends we've referred over here have all purchased cars, and family members have purchased several. My mom, my sister, my sister's boyfriend, my brother, my brother's wife, too, yeah. Yeah, and actually cars. three of our employees at our company. Their time is valuable, so they know they can come here, and people will take their time and what they want seriously. And remember, if it isn't the best used car you've ever owned, just bring it back to Beaverton Chrysler Dodge. Paulsville RV is celebrating the grand opening of the new Mount Vernon store at every Paulsville RV location. For example, own a Keystone Everest for $126 a month. Own a Keystone Fusion for $411 a month. Get the best RV deal now through Monday at Paulsville RV. Body Worlds 3, now on exhibit at OMSI. You're watching K2 News, voted best newscast by the Associated Press. Welcome back, everybody. Americans are living longer than ever, but we're falling behind people in other countries. New census figures show an average American baby born in 2004 will live almost 80 years, but that only puts the U.S. in 42nd place in the world. That's down from 11th about 20 years ago. Researchers blame the drop on everything from obesity to the high number of Americans living without health care. The longest life expectancy is in the tiny European nation of Andorra. It's followed by Japan, 
Macau, San Marino, and Singapore. Americans who drink milk might feel like they're being milked for all of their money these days. That's because, according to the Agriculture Department, the price of the dairy product is at an all-time high in the U.S. The average price of a gallon of milk is now $3.80 per gallon, compared to being $3.29 back in February. The prices in some states have gone far beyond the average, like Georgia, where milk is selling for $5 a gallon. Experts blame the rising cost of milk on, on shortages in Europe and Australia. And speaking of prices, Microsoft is cutting the price of its Xbox 360 model by 13%. They're hoping to entice more people to buy one ahead of the holiday season. That pushes the price of an Xbox down from $400 to $350. But just last month, Microsoft's rival, Sony, slashed the price of its PlayStation 3 game system by 17%, lowering its price to $500. Lucky for you, parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coming up in sports, the Mariners get a pitching gem on the road. Plus, Tiger Woods prowls his way to yet another major title. And sprinkles across the metro area today. Will there be more on the way or will it be fun? Julie Raddick will be here with the forecast. Now you can become a K2U News reporter. Capture a news event on camera, go to KATU.com and send it in. You can even see it air on K2 News. Go to KATU.com to find out how you can become a K2U News reporter today. It's back. You loved it, so we brought it back to you. Right now, you can get a mouth-watering, cheesy bites pizza from Pizza Hut for only $12.99. Order your favorite toppings on a garlic butter-flavored crust with 28 cheese-filled bites around the outside. Just pull them off and pop them in your mouth. Call or stop by for a large, one-topping, cheesy bites pizza. Just $12.99. Only at Pizza Hut. America's favorite pizza. New Crest Nature's Expressions, the protective power of Crest, with a hint of Mother Nature. Choose between natural peppermint oil, lemon and mint extracts, and mint with green tea extracts. New Crest Nature's Expressions, it's Crest with a natural twist. Buy Nature's Expressions and get a free music download of Martina McBride. Comcast Digital Voice is a technological breakthrough. Calls pass through our fiber optic center on their way to your home. Our digital network provides the capacity to offer the first real choice in home phone service with unlimited calling in the U.S. and Canada, 12 popular calling features including voicemail with email notification and call blocking. Connect to the future. Get Comcast Digital Voice for $33 a month for 12 months. Call 1-800-COMCAST today. Guess they're thinking about Arby's new toasted subs. Whether it's the French dip and Swiss, the classic Italian, turkey bacon club, or the Philly beef, Arby's subs are toasted to perfection and served hot. They're so delicious, they'll have you saying, I'm thinking Arby's. Get your toasted subs at the drive-thru. Monday at 5. And it said free ringtone, um, no subscription needed. Sounds good, right? Watch out. In a K2 News Consumer Alert, we show you how free ringtones can cost you big time. Monday at 5 on K2 News. Of course, dogs are man's best friend, so why should they be left out in the heat of summer? Because they're dogs. I mean, one pet owner in North Carolina is taking action by installing an air conditioner in his doghouse. Ira Godwin set up an old window unit for his pet, Mac, and now Mac can keep cool during those dog days of summer. Godwin says he just loves his dog. Some of the people, you know, uh, thought, well, that was just hilarious, but, you know, I just feel like that if you have a pet, you need to take care of him. Mac's doghouse is an old playhouse Godwin's daughter used to use. It also had carpet, but he ripped that out since it draws heat. Ira's wife says she didn't have air conditioning as a child, but she does support her husband. In the background, you might have seen the espresso maker right there. <laughs> right. One of those, too. I would have done the same thing. Really? Yeah, an air conditioner for your dog, why not? How about a swamp cooler? Swamp coolers are cool. That would work. Those are neat. Anything. A waiting pool works, too. That yeah. does work, too. <laughs> I guess it all depends on your budget, doesn't it? Uh, we have some sprinkles move through the area today. Temperature's much cooler uh, than we've seen, than we saw yesterday. Yesterday at this time of the evening, we were still in the upper 70s. Right now, we're in the 60s. 
Let's take a look at the satellite radar picture and show you what's uh, going on at this time. It's uh, mostly cloudy skies. We have a little light rain moving through the area. Not much. A cold front that is currently offshore will not make it inland. As a matter of fact, it's going to retrograde. This little disturbance moving through here will kind of slide upward and across the front and really kind of choke off its moisture and prevent it from doing a whole lot more. Also, we have a ridge of high pressure building in across the western half of the country, and that's going to help the front retrograde and go back out onto the Pacific Ocean, uh, too. So, rainfall amounts the last 24 hours have been pretty minor, just a trace in Portland and in Vancouver. Hillsborough saw about two one-hundredths, one one-hundredth in Scapoose, so just enough to get the rain bucket wet, and that is about it. Live look outside from the Embassy Suites Hotel. 65 degrees and very gray and cloudy. We're going to continue to see cloudy skies for much of the evening. Still a chance of a sprinkle, but it's a, a, the chance is fading pretty quickly, and then it dries out much later on, and we should gradually kind of, the clouds should part, and we should see partly cloudy skies by morning. And as a matter of fact, lots of sunshine come tomorrow. So today's high is only 66 in Portland. That is a good 15 degrees below normal. 81 in the Dalles, 83 in Redmond, 68 in Salem, much cooler on the western half of the state, west of the Cascades than over here on the eastern half where the marine influence is not as prominent. It was 68 in Troutdale today, 66 in Vancouver, 66 in Scappoose, and 66 degrees in McMinnville. What's happening is center of low pressure that tried to bring the front on shore, well, the jet stream is digging very far south, and when you combine that with the upward action of the jet stream on the other side of it here on the United States or on the uh, continental landmass, what's happening is we're seeing things kind of one side go north, one side go south, and it's forcing the jet stream to kind of go back on itself a little bit. So the jet stream is going to retrograde and really prevent any moisture from coming inland. And that's why we're going to start to see fair weather take control once again, as that high pressure ridge really sets itself up over the western half of the country. So tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. It'll warm up. We're going to see things turn around dramatically. By Wednesday, more clouds move in. And then showers are possible Thursday, as finally the system is allowed to move east and track all over the continental U.S. But for tomorrow, we should see a gorgeous day. Lots of sunshine and temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s at the coast. In the inland valleys, the Willamette Valley, we're looking at 79 in Vancouver, 82 in Salem, 84 in Eugene, and 77 degrees in Longview with mostly sunny skies. And then up in the Cascades, lots of sunshine there, 72 degrees and a freezing level at 14,000 feet. In central Oregon, look for your highs in the mid to upper 80s, 86 in Madras, 89 in Redmond, plenty of blue sky there. Once again, blue sky over in eastern Oregon as well. A little breezy near John Day, but overall, most places should be fairly calm with 89 in Baker City, 88 in La Grande, 80 in Yakima, and 91 in Hermiston. A mild offshore flow kicks in, so the Dallas winds there will be a lot calmer than we've seen in days past. Same story with Hood River. Light easterly winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Troutdale will get up to 80 tomorrow. And tonight, here in the metro area, we are looking at 56 degrees for an overnight low with light winds. And then tomorrow, plenty of blue sky, sunshine, and temperatures near normal at 80 degrees for a high here in the Rose City. Five-day forecast and 10-day trend. Another nice day Tuesday, slightly warmer, and then the clouds roll in on Wednesday. Slight chance of rain Thursday, but even it's not, it's, it is slight, not, not much of a chance, but uh, temperatures cool off a little bit in the mid-70s or so, and then the weekend is looking pretty nice. Next weekend, kind of morning clouds, afternoon sun, should be good. That'd be nice, thank you. All right, thanks, Craig, joining us now, and Tiger winning his first big one as a father. Yeah, Tiger had a new addition right there with him, <laughs> so it was nice. And, uh, and matching red, I noticed. Yes, yeah, I don't think they kept the kid, it was 100 degrees out there, so I think they kept the kid in air conditioning, so we're going <laughs> to talk dog. Yeah, exactly. We're going to talk Tiger in a moment, we're going to start with baseball. And if the Mariners are going to make it to the postseason, they're going to have to play better away from safe pill field and get stronger starting pitching. Well, today, they got both. And suddenly, Seattle, they're playing 500 ball on the road. Jeff Weaver would get some early run support via the long ball. Yeah, Richie Sexton struggled all year, but this one he gets all. But that's his 18th long ball there, and Seattle was up 3 to nothing. Adrian Beltre, he's really had a nice, strong season, and this is just a bomb. Look at that. No downer. That's gone. A two-run home run, and it was 5 to nothing. More than enough. Look at the catch, though, with the hat. Now, that is impressive. That guy needs a glove. He'd be even better. Jeff Weaver, well, he was uh, impressive today. Goes complete game, shutout. Second of the year, has eight strikeouts, and the Mariners win it. The final was 6 zip, but Yankees and Angels both win as well. In the Myers today, the Beavers lost their third straight at Salt Lake. Today, the Bees get Portland. The final was 9-5. to five. And speaking of baseball, huge night for the 11- and 12-year-old boys 
from Lake Oswego. They'll play in the regional finals tonight at 7 in San Bernardino, California. The game will be televised on ESPN2. Now, if they can pull off the victory, they're going to be headed to Williamsport, Pennsylvania to play in the Little League World Series. Once again, that game tonight on ESPN2. All right, now we'll talk some golf where it was kind of over before it started today at the PGA Championship. You see, coming into today's action, Tiger Woods was 12 for 12 in majors when leading after three rounds. Well, now Tiger is a perfect 13 for 13. Yep, it was hot in Tulsa, but did not bother Tiger Woods early on. This is just sweet. Puts it in for birdie, and Tiger's going to give us like a little bit of the new fist pump, kind of across the body. It looked like he might have hurt his knee on that. But he was okay. He would recover nicely. But how about Woody Austin? Does make a run. He's excited. Here's a birdie, and he's within one stroke of Tiger. But Tiger was Tiger on 15. Yeah, good ball. Point at the ball, Tiger. Yep, you did your job. One goes in. He's on 18 now for a two-stroke win. Yeah. Tiger Woods wins his 13th major. It's a, he's now five behind Jack Nicklaus, but it was his first with his daughter Sam in attendance. Uh, to have her here, it, it, it just uh, it brings chills to me, even, even now. Just seeing her there, I, I was surprised that she was out here. Um, having her and Elin there, it, it was just, it was just, it, it's just so cool. He's pretty good. All right, to college football, we're both the Beavers and Ducks. Well, they took Sunday off. The Beavers are resting up after yesterday's two-hour scrimmage. A top wideout, Sammy Strader, not there. He continues to miss time with personal issues. But both quarterbacks competing for the top spot saw plenty of action. Sean Canfield and Lyle Moivau both struggle early. Both threw interceptions, but they would both settle down later on. So who will be the starter? Well, Coach Mike Riley, well, he had no answer after yesterday's scrimmage, but he hopes to come up with the starter maybe as soon as early this week. There's obviously a situation for them. We don't talk about it a lot, but it is very, it is there. It's real. The competition for them is, is big, so I imagine there's some nerves, which it's good to practice with some nerves because I think there'll be a few more in the game day. All right, I'll make a decision soon. As for the Ducks, they'll have a busy week. Yeah, it includes three two-a-days. The first one is tomorrow. Let's race to the track where things got a little testy at Watkins Glen today. How about this? 18 laps in. We've got a wreck that includes Kevin Harvick and Juan Carlos Montoya. Kevin Harvick was not happy with Juan Carlos Montoya. Yeah, how about this? On the track, a little brouhaha. Replays would later show that it wasn't even Montoya's fault. I don't think we should tell Kevin Harvick that, huh? As for the race, two laps to go. Jeff Gordon, your points leader, has the lead, and he goes spinning. You don't see that often. Tony Stewart, they call him smoke, and he smokes right by everyone. Stewart is red hot. He'll take the checkered flag, his fourth win at Watkins Glen. And Tony Stewart has won three of the last four next Elk Up races. As for Vancouver's Greg Biffle, not bad. He finishes 10th overall. And finally, we're going to head over to the Rose Corner where the preparations are underway for next week's ATS Do Tour. The high-flying non-stop action that includes the best skateboarders, BMX, and FMX riders in the world. Well, they'll invade the Rose Garden and surrounding areas on Thursday. The event runs through next Sunday. Now, there is a chance that Jake Brown, that skateboarder who suffered that awful crash at the X Games, hey. there is a chance that he's going to compete here in Portland. No word yet, but when we know, we'll tell you. Teflon boy. Yes, he is tough. <laughs> hey, when we come back, the 25th annual Slug Queen competition in Eugene. Log on to broadwaytoyota.com, shop our inventory online, and let our internet staff arrange everything for you. It's really the VIP way to buy a Toyota. If you're looking for a Toyota, Broadway is the only way. Why settle for an ordinary BLT when you can have a chicken BLT from Taco Time? You've never had a BLT like this before. Crispy bacon, lettuce, tomato, guacamole, cheddar cheese, and ranch dressing combined with our delicious all-white chicken and rolled into our famous homestyle tortillas. Try the chicken BLT today at Taco Time. It's my ordinary BLT. Anytime is Taco Time. Monday at 5. And it said free ringstone, um, no subscription needed. Sounds good, right? Watch out. In the K2 News Consumer Alert, we show you how free ringtones can cost you big time. Monday at 5 on K2 News. Are you like me? I have high blood pressure and I have high cholesterol. Sometimes problems come in twos, but sometimes help can come in one. Catawitz. 
Cannabis contains two proven medicines, Norvasc for high blood pressure and Lipitor for high cholesterol, combined in one pill, Catawit. Catawit is one of many treatment options I discussed with my doctor. Ask your doctor if Catawit's right for you. Along with diet and exercise, one pill doing two jobs for me. My doctor said Catawit's not for everyone. It's not for people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. To check for liver problems, you need simple blood tests. Tell your doctor about any heart problems and all other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. For blood pressure and cholesterol lowering benefits, it's Catawit. One pill, two medicines. Makes sense to you, makes sense to me. Ask your doctor if Catawit's right for you. Log on to broadwaytoyota.com, shop our inventory online, and let our internet staff arrange everything for you. It's really the VIP way to buy a Toyota. If you're looking for a Toyota, Broadway is the only way. We'll be back in 30 minutes with more local news, including local soldiers who finished their active duty years ago are being mustered to see if they're physically ready to be put back on active duty. How are former soldiers reacting to the call after settling back into civilian life? That story and all the day's local headlines coming up tonight at 6.30. Finally tonight, about a dozen hopefuls vied for the title of Flood Queen last night in downtown Eugene. The Society for the Legitimization of the Ubiquitous, Ubiquitous Gastropod, that's a real name, proudly hosted its 25th annual competition and coronation. Organizers say the Flood Queen needs to have a sense of humor, a great fashion sense, <laughs> and the nerves to get up on stage. Throughout her one-year reign, the Slug Queen will attend various Eugene events. And I really, I was doing some research on this, and I don't really know why they have that event. <laughs> it's Eugene. It, that's kind of the answer, isn't that it? That is the answer. <laughs> See you in a half hour. I have COPD with chronic bronchitis which makes it hard to breathe. But now that I'm breathing better with Advair, I can cheer my grandson to victory. For people with COPD with chronic bronchitis, great news. Advair helps significantly improve lung function. While nothing can reverse COPD, Advair is different from other medications because it's the only product with an anti-inflammatory and a bronchodilator working together to help you breathe better. Advair won't replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms and should not be used more than twice a day. Lung infections, including pneumonia, have been reported with Advair. Taking Advair may increase your risk for osteoporosis and some eye problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking Advair and ask about the risks and benefits of continuing Advair after six months. Thanks for coming, Grandpa. <laughs> I wouldn't have missed it. Ask your doctor how Advair helps improve lung function for better breathing. Find out how to get your first full prescription free at AdverseCOPD.com. In a typical week, Champion will install over 4,000 energy-efficient windows. We'll place worry-free vinyl siding on 250 homes and complete 130 gorgeous patio rooms. Best of all, every week over 1,000 homeowners will discover they made the easiest decision ever. Get to the Champion showroom right now and save 35% off quality Champion replacement windows and vinyl siding and $1,500 off a beautiful new Champion patio room. Call Champion for your easiest home improvement project ever. Ever notice that stores rarely put their most popular products on sale? Well, for a limited time, Sleep Country's best-selling mattresses are all on sale. Save on Sleep Country's top-selling Simmons, Sealy, Spring Air, and Pacific mattresses. Even our best-selling Beautyrest and Posturepedic mattresses are on sale. Plus, get 12 months interest-free financing. The best sellers on sale for a limited time. Guaranteed comfort, best selection, lowest price. Why buy a mattress anywhere else? Body Worlds 3, now on exhibit at OMSI.